Hi everyone. In this video, I want to look at using Excel, the Excel spreadsheet, to process our data for our lab reports. Now, you can see on this Excel spreadsheet here that I've got the data I collected from my lab report. I'll just enlarge it a bit so I can see what I'm doing. Okay. Now, we're going to want to populate the average column and we're going to want to populate the square of average time column. And what we don't want to be doing is spending a lot of time with our calculators, punching in all of these numbers. You'll remember, you'll remember that we took six trials at each, at each one of our distances. So that's 36 pieces of data there. We, we, we don't want to type all those into our calculator. We want Excel to do the hard work for us. So the way we're going to do it with the average is we're going to come over, we're going to click on that cell, type equals, type the word average, open bracket, and then we're going to come over here, click on our first cell, drag it across, release on our final cell, close bracket, enter, and we have our average. So the average of our time for the marble to roll 20 centimeters is 0 0.885 seconds. Now, to make life even easier, if that's possible, instead of typing in equals average, open brackets, instead of doing this for every single set of data, Excel makes it even easier for us. Let me delete that. I'll get, make it go away. Okay. So if I want to populate all of these cells down here with averages of my data, all I have to do is click on the existing average. And up here in, in, uh, in our formula, you see the formula for getting an average. Click on it. And then I'm going to take my cursor. The thing that moves around is called a cursor and take the cursor, which you currently see is a white cross, place it on the cell, and if you look down in the bottom right-hand corner of the cell, there's a little black box, my white cross becomes a black cross when I go over that black box. White cross, black cross, white cross, black cross. Click on the little black box with my black cross, drag it down, and we populate all the cells, which is pretty good. Okay, we are also going to want to populate the square of the average time. So we're going to click on that one and we say equals. Now, I'm going to find the square of the average time. This box here is the average time. So click. So the cell is J3, you see J, and we see 3. And we want to square it. So we're going to raise it with a little hat to the power of two. Enter. Job done. Now we have the square of the average time. Click. My white cross becomes a black cross. Drag that down. And we populate all of those cells. Now that's a lot easier than getting out your calculator and figuring out the average of all of your trials and finding the square of the average of all your trials. Okay, so now we've populated the column for our average time the marble takes to roll each interval. And we've populated the column for the square of the average time it takes the marble to roll each interval. Now we're going to build our graph. Now I'm going to show you the way I build a graph. It's not necessarily the best way to build a graph, but it's the way that I build a graph. I'm going to go through it quite quickly. You can always pause and replay at any point to follow along. I'm going to have an empty cell initially, so I choose an empty cell, could be anywhere. I move up, I select Insert, I move over to Scatter, I select a scatter graph, and that provides me with a nice big white box, which is really very useful. You'll notice up here I have this element Chart Design and Format. If I click on this, this cell over here, it removes the highlight from my white box and those elements disappear. If I choose the chart area again, that brings our chart design and format back. We want these. These are good. Okay. We are going to 
select data. We are going to come over and we find that we have this little white box here. We want to add a series. This will be series one. And then we have to decide what are we going to plot on our x-axis and what are we going to plot on our y-axis. To help us make this decision, we move over to this expression here. Now we're rolling marbles down a slope. So the equation of motion s equals ut plus a half at squared can help us describe the way the marble rolls down the slope, where s is the displacement of the marble, u is the initial speed, t is time, and a is acceleration. Now because the initial speed is always zero, we're releasing the marble from the top of the slope. We're not pushing it, we're just releasing it. So its initial speed is zero. Zero times t is zero. So that leaves us with s equals a half at squared. The equation for a line, the linear equation, is y equals mx plus c, where c is the y-intercept. Our linear graph is going to have a y-intercept of zero, because when the marble rolls zero distance, it will take zero time. So that means that our linear graph is going to end up being this shape here, y equals mx. s equals a half a t squared, y equals mx. s is a variable, y is a variable. So our Displacement will be plotted on the y-axis, and time squared will be plotted on the x-axis, and our gradient will be half of the acceleration. So now we're going to add a series. On our x-axis, we are going to have the square of the average time plot. I'm not sure if you saw how I did that. I'll do it again. I'll just delete this all off. Okay. So on the x-axis, I, I click on this box. I click on that cell, drag down, include all the cells that I want, and post it. And that populates all those cells as my x values. If I want the y values, which is going to be the distance the marble rolled, I select and drag all the cells for that quantity and post that. So now I've got my x values chosen as the t squared values, my y values are chosen as my displacement values. I set OK and we have our graph. Now I've just got to add in all the titles and labels. So this graph in particular is a uh, displacement rolled versus square of the time taken for each distance. And we're going to have to include x-axis title and units, y-axis title and units. So here we go. Select our chart area. Remember, if you don't have the chart area, the chart design option disappears. So select the chart area. Chart design is there. Come over, add a chart title. We've got axis titles. The primary horizontal axis is square of the time taken. Square of the time taken to roll, and that's seconds squared. Okay, if I want to make that work, I've got to come over here. I've got to Highlight the two, so there's the two highlighted. Right click over the highlighted to select font, select superscript, and that is done. For my y axis titles, add chart element, primary vertical axis, and this is our distance rolled. Distance, or we may as well put displacement. Displacement rolled, and that's in meters. I just check my spelling. Displacement rolled, and that's in meters. So now we have our graph. Okay, we're going to want to add a line of best fit. So we select one of our entries. Right click, add trend line, 
set the intercept as zero, display the equation on the chart, and I'm just going to move the equation so it's somewhere more convenient to read, and we have our equation. And the graph is ready. So you can use Excel in your lab report to process your data, get your averages, get the square of your times, build your graphs. You're going to need a graph like this one for each of the marbles. I've got my small sinker there, small marble, large marble, large sinker in varying degrees of, of completion. You'll notice with the small sinker, I've actually got the raw data graph as well, definitely not linear. The manipulated data graph is linear. The small marble, definitely not linear, but the, lin the uh, manipulated data graph is linear. You'll need a graph for the manipulated data for each of your four marbles before and use each of those graphs to find the acceleration. This here is half the acceleration, that value, 0.2215. You'll then take each of those values for acceleration, so you've got the gradients, then double them to get the actual accelerations, and you'll be plotting that against the masses of the graphs. Good luck, and I'll see you next time.